Hey there friends, back with another comparison video. This time we're pitting the old trusty ZV-1 against the mighty A7S3. I've compared the ZV-1 against the A6400, the A7 III, and the A7C. And in each of those instances, I think the ZV-1 has held its own pretty well. Today, we're gonna take it outside and do it again. I'm the Tactical Traveler, and I make videos about camera gear and accessories from a perspective of a person who buys this gear with their own money. Everything I review on my channel, I've either purchased with my own money or rented with my own money. I don't use affiliate links to try and drive you to make purchases for things that you don't need just so I get a little kickback. And I don't get free gear from anybody, whether that be for testing or any free stuff to try out. So if that kind of thing interests you, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. We're gonna take these two cameras outside in the real world and just pit them against each other and test them in what I like to call the backyard proving grounds. Let's go. Well, here we are. I'm pitting these two cameras against each other. Can you tell, just based on this, which one's the ZV-1 and which one is the A7S 3 I might be confusing you. Is it that one? Am I looking at the A7S 3 Am I looking at the ZV-1 now? Is this the A7S 3 Is this the ZV-1? The camera on your left is the ZV-1, and the camera on your right is the A7S 3 in all of its glory. So how's the image quality compare in these two cameras? Shooting both of them right now in aperture priority. S-Log 2 on the ZV-1, and uh, S-Log 3 in the A7S 3 This is so many S-Log A7s. This is, this is tough. This is tough. I'm going to screw this up at some point. I'm using the Tamron 17-28, to and I've zoomed it all the way into to 28 to hopefully mimic the field of view to be similar on the A7S 3 I can actually go all the way out here with the Tamron and I think it gives me a little bit wider field of view. I am on a selfie stick here. I, I got them pretty close. Has the A7 III finally met his match and totally been blown away? Did I see I said it wrong? I meant the ZV-1. Has the ZV-1 met his match and finally, finally been blown away? Okay, in keeping with our traditional test that we normally do, we're going to start going one camera at a time here. We're on the A7S 3 for this next part. It's a little bit of wind in my face. I hope, hope my little Rode Wireless Go is working in this wind, or maybe this audio is terrible. I am an aperture priority right now. I feel like if you're going to walk around and do this kind of stuff, aperture priority is the way to go. It's so important to not be fiddling with the camera so much and, and really focus on you know, delivering what you're trying to say to the people watching this video. If the whole time you're one of these, eh, I'm messing with my ND filter, that it gets kind of annoying. Okay, here we are back again on my favorite little camera, the little ZV-1. This camera has held its own, in my opinion, against the A6400, against the A7 III, and against the A7C. I think this camera has done well. Now, it's probably met its match today. Today is the day the ZV-1 has met its match. I'm not gonna deny that, but you have to think, while this may not be a fair comparison between this camera and the A7S 3 keep in mind this camera, I think on special now is about $600, and everything for $600 is what I'm using right now. It's, you get everything, other than the selfie stick, which is like 10 bucks on Amazon, find a generic selfie stick. The A7S 3 is $3,400, 3500 like $3,498, without a lens, without any memory cards, without anything, just the body. So when you compare the prices there, a $3,000 difference in price, I mean, is there a $3,000 difference in image quality for what you're going to use it for? That's the first question you got to ask. So what we're doing now is I'm using, this is the ideal way that I would probably set this camera up if I was going to use it for vlogging. And this is, uh, this is what I get. The exposure changes a little bit, but I think this camera does a nice job. It's got great autofocus. Same autofocus as the, uh, the A7S 3 Same as the A7C. Little selfie stick. You fix the, the issue that's, you know, the field of view not wide enough. Just got a $10 selfie stick off Amazon. This is exposed using full manual exposure, S-Log 3. I got the old variable ND on. What do, we, what do we got it out here? We're right there. Let's see. Variable ND happening here. Probably just messed up my exposure now. That was smart. Hey guys, future Frank here. Just breaking in. I'm going over the footage now from the manual exposure section of the video that you're watching. And I realize I'm a little bit overexposed in this. And this is kind of what comes along with getting a new camera. One of the things I've noticed about 
the A7S III versus my A7 III that I'm recording on now is like judging the exposure on the screen because it's a different screen, different color science, everything's a little bit different. I'm still learning just like everyone else. Judging that exposure on the screen and using that variable ND and just trying to read it, it I mean, I'm, I'm a little overexposed here. I can do better and I will do better for you in the future. All right, back to the video. If you're trying to vlog and you're gonna be walking, the exposure is constantly changing, you're constantly doing one of these numbers here and I just think it's a little bit distracting. It gets to be a point I'm constantly doing this. Okay, and now we're talking about what we're talking about and then I'm doing this. And I mean, is the image quality gonna be the best? Your motion blur is gonna be wonderful this way? Yeah, probably. I don't think it's necessary if you're just walking around blogging. Just my opinion. A couple of the features that are exclusive to the A7 S3, 4K, 60 frames a second. That's what we're in right now. We can slow this down and make it epic. Here, let's, let's try this. We've got our 4K 60 here. That's what everybody's wanted. We're in 10 bit colors. We've got our faster shutter speed, so we got no motion blur. I actually have to use my, my variable ND on this guy. This is, it, just to be clear with the whole hating on the variable ND, if I'm behind the camera and I'm filming something professional, I don't use aperture priority. I use manual mode. We, we do things correctly if that's, that's the case. But while we're here in see this is how distracting it is i'm trying to get it just right while we're here vlogging i think aperture priority is the way to go i probably beat that horse to death so enough of that as if 4k 60 wasn't enough we've got 4k 120 frames a second Let's look at the active steady shot. So I currently have active steady shot on and I'm gonna do my usual walk here. Not a care in the world about my steps or anything, just, just walking, just walking. How is the active steady shot working? Walk back. Now this time, I'm gonna try and take a little bit more care with my walking and try and smooth my steps out a little bit, be a little bit more ninja-like in my movements. Does this help? Is this okay for this test? Active steady shot, all, all stabilization is off. This is just everything off on this camera. Again, walking without a care, just gives you a little bit of a comparison. And now we'll walk back again, this time taking a little bit more care with our steps and trying to, to smooth things out a little bit as best we can. Okay, same walk this time, except now I've got everything off, but I'm gonna use Catalyst Browse. And this is with Catalyst Browse engaged. And we compare that to the other clip with that other guy over there and how out of whack he looks. Does Catalyst Browse make that big of a difference? I should probably mention what Catalyst Browse is. I sort of am assuming if you're watching this video, you know what it is. But in case you don't, it's free software you can download from Sony that uses the gyro data that's into the camera. So this camera, the ZV-1 and the A7C, along with some of their cinema cameras, record the gyro data, like the, your movement. Um, that information is then used in the Catalyst Browse software to stabilize your footage. And it does a pretty darn good job, in my opinion. That's what you've been seeing in these last couple clips. So let's do an extreme test of Catalyst Browse. I'm gonna like just jog, and then we're gonna see how this stabilizes it. Ready? Here we go. Like, is this even stable? I don't even know. Let's go back again. This running with the camera, is it even stable? Tell you what, Catalyst Browse, if you can do something with that, good for you. Good for you. Because we did it on the A7 S3, we gotta do it on this one. Let's do a ridiculous test of Catalyst Browse. I'm gonna jog that way. 
on the end of this selfie stick. Here we go. All right, let's compare it now with its active steady shot. This has the same active steady shot as the A7S3. And I'm just walking again, same path I walked with the A7S3, walking without a care with active steady shot engaged. No attempt to slow down or ease up my steps. Now, when we go back here, let's go ahead and do the same walk, but this time we're gonna try and walk with a little bit more care, try and hold the camera steady and still and see if we can get even better results if I just put a little effort into this. This is the A7S III in fully automatic mode. It's choosing everything for me. After sitting here fumbling with the camera, it's even choosing the audio levels. I have no choice in anything. I've got the picture profiles turned off and this is just creative style standard. So this is like the in camera color. If you just wanted to take this camera out of the box, press record in automatic mode, this is the image quality that you would get. The active steady shot is on right now. All that's on by default. So this is what you get with this camera. And I'll do the same thing with the ZV-1, which I've done in all of my other comparisons, but we'll put a little bit of side-by-side -side footage right here. So you're gonna have the A7S3, if I've been saying it right, on your right. And then on your left, you're gonna have the ZV-1 for a little comparison in the auto exposure, auto settings, auto color, everything footage. This is what you get side by side here. How's that look? We're here in auto mode on the A7S III. The audio you're currently hearing is out of the Rode uh, Wireless Go Lav. Let's go ahead and give you a comparison now of the audio straight out of this camera with its onboard mics. So this is the audio you get in the A7S III with its onboard microphones. This is what you get. It's a little bit windy today, so you know, it is what it is, but this is the onboard mics of the A7S III. What I was surprised about, and I haven't done it in a day that was this windy, but what I was surprised about was they're not bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, now we are in the A7. We're not on the A7. I don't know what I'm talking about. We are on the ZV-1 still, and this is the intelligent auto mode. So this is no picture profile. Um, camera's doing everything. This is that simple, out of the box. I just want this camera to make good videos. This is what you get. I am using the selfie stick and I have active steady shot on. I think this camera does a nice job. And I think if you just wanted a camera that was like better than a cell phone, maybe I should compare this camera to a cell phone. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if I should compare this to my iPhone 12 Pro. I've kind of toyed with that idea, but I haven't done it. I guess this would be comparable to cell phone camera footage. This is like just auto mode. You just don't want to do any work. I just want to press record and, and get what I get. I think this camera does a nice job that way. And while we're still here in auto mode, I should mention that all of the audio you're hearing when I'm using just the ZV-1 like this is from the onboard mics of the ZV-1. This is the audio. It's got the little fuzzy wind muff on top, so hopefully that's mitigating some of the wind that I'm dealing with today. It does have a microphone input, so I will plug the Rode Wireless Go in now and show you how you can improve the audio if you wanted to do that. So this is the audio from the Rode Wireless Go. I switched back to Aperture Priority and S-Log 2. In my opinion, if when I use this camera for a vlog that I want to have the best quality on, this is the mode that I'm gonna be in. This is the audio I'm gonna try and get. And I think it does a pretty darn good job. Bottom line is just what are you gonna use your camera for? The A7S III, I'll probably use it for a while for even little vlogs and things like that because it's a new camera. I like it. I'm going to want to play with it, but mostly that's going to be relegated to professional work, uh, stuff when I'm sitting down at my desk in the office doing stuff because it's, it's going to beat this camera in low light, which we're going to do a low light test in just a minute. Obviously, I'm going to have to wait for the sun to go down. So when I say just a minute, I mean uh, in about four hours. The point of this camera was to keep it as small, compact, easy to carry with me as possible and still have good quality images good autofocus and, and good audio. And I mean, it just checks all those boxes for me. All right, let's, let's do the low light test now. Well, let's go inside and wait till the sun goes down and do the low light test. And let's be honest, before the test even happens, we all know who's gonna win that. Regardless that the A7S III is a low light monster, it's, it's a full frame. This is a one inch sensor. Let's not kid ourselves who's gonna win. This is gonna be my final little part of this outdoor low light test. We are at 6400 ISO. 
so here we are. This is, I mean, it's it's pretty much what I'd call nighttime. This is this is what I would say is nighttime right now. I mean, there's the sun just, just below the horizon back there. It's pretty much nighttime, and this is the ZV1 at low light test. How's it doing? So this is the low light performance of the A7S III in the same conditions here as what we just saw with the, the ZV-1. I'm at 12,800 ISO. I can tell you now, looking at this screen over here, it, it, like, it keeps drawing my eye because it is bright. Probably the screen is lighting my face a little bit. Let's just turn it away from me so I don't even look at it. Pretty low light situation out here. How clean is this image compared to the ZV-1? Okay. One more quick break in here from Future Frank. When I did this first low light test, I realized when I came in and reviewed the footage, it didn't really look dark. It looks like it's daytime still. And part of that's because modern cameras are so darn good. And part of it's, it wasn't quite late enough. It was dusk and it looked dark to my naked eye. But when the camera looked at it, it wasn't dark. So let's go back out there right now for an extreme low light test. I'm just using the onboard mic. So hopefully this sounds okay. I, I didn't didn't mic myself back up. I, I got inside and was reviewing the footage and just blown away. With, like it is, it is dark. I have a porch light on that's illuminating my face and I'll, I'll walk over here into the shadow momentarily to see how well this does. We're still at the exact same settings we were at before, 12,800 ISO. My mind is blown with, this is the first like real low light test I've done with this. You guys are finding out with me. It's crazy. So let's go over here in the shadows and see how far we can push this ISO and what we've got. Now, that porch light is still illuminating the fence over here, but it's it's not hitting me. I'm in the shadow. So let's see. We're still at 12,800 ISO. How far can we push it and, and, and have a usable image? 51,200. I mean, I've still got the box on my face for no eye detection now, but I still have face detection. I mean... I don't even know if this image is going to be usable, but I can see clouds in the sky on the screen. This is crazy to me. Uh, there's a lot of hype around this camera about its low light performance. It's true. It is true. Now, the box is coming on and off my face. I don't know if it's losing me in the autofocus, but I just thought it was worth coming out here and giving it like an extreme low light test. I'll grab the ZV-1 and do real quick, but I'm sure it's going to be a mess. You won't be able to see anything. I'm going to come stand in this exact same spot, and I'm going to bump the ZV-1 and see what you've got. But this is crazy. So now I'm walking back toward the porch light and it's almost overexposed, like clipping a little bit. But like what I thought was interesting is some of the low light stuff I was doing was clipping. Okay, so now I'm on the ZV-1. Um, it's at 12,800 ISO, which is the max ISO for this camera right now. I'm standing in that same porch light area. And this is the results. I'm sure it's so noisy because when I was reviewing the footage of this camera with the, the 6400 ISO, it was pretty darn noisy. Now, the face tracking is still working, but the, the eye tracking isn't happening here. The eye tracking was happening on the A7S III in this position, but um, it still had face tracking when we went over here in the dark. So let's go over here in this extreme darkness and see if you can even see me. Is this good content? This is good content if... You want to be incognito and you don't even know who you are. So you can still see I've got the the fences lit up by the... Th I'm in... Is this even... This is 12,800 ISO. It's probably just a noisy mess. There's dogs barking at me because it's so dark they don't know what I'm doing out here. This is a little bit extreme. A little too dark as we come back in. Now the box just came back around my face. I had no box at all. And that's going to conclude <laughs> the extreme low light test. I, I might include some of that other low light stuff, but this is the extreme low light test for the ZV-1 versus the A7S3. Well, we're back inside now and we've got the old ZV-1 and the A7S3. I've had a chance to look over the footage and I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed with the ZV-1 and yes, it was handedly beat by the A7S3, but who would have expected any different? What I was impressed with is it did a pretty good job. I mean, this camera is is a lot better than people give it credit for. Sure, it's got the issue with the field of view being a little bit tight, but that can be overcome with a selfie stick. Which camera do I think is better? Well, that's never a question I'm going to answer on this channel. All I do is tell you how I use the cameras and what features I prefer in one camera over another. 
Ultimately, which camera is better has got to be decided by you. I can't make that decision for you. Well, thanks for sticking around till this point. This is a little longer than some of my other videos. If you got any suggestions or comments, please leave them down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video before you leave. It really helps me out. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.